people keep saying the Guardians play in a weak division, that they can't hang with the big boys. Well, they take two out of three from the Blue Jays. They just split a series with the Astros. Maybe this team's just good. We're going to get into the weekend series and some promotions that are on the way on today's episode of Locked on Guardians. You are Locked on Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Guardians. I am your host, Jeff Ellis. Let's, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Guardians your first listen today and every day, wherever it is you get podcasts. Uh, what a weekend series. Like, they kind of owned the Blue Jays. This was very nearly could have been a sweep, which would have been huge. Uh, last time I checked, I should probably keep the score going over here uh, so I can follow it. The Guardians, or not the Guardians, the Twins were losing to the Angels. Uh, they had followed Cleveland, right? They won, then they lost, so the, the advantage had stayed consistent. Uh, Joe Adele, thankfully, they did not trade for him, uh, maybe helping us out today as fans. We'll talk about these three games. We're going to talk about some roster moves that are coming. We already know we're getting a new uh, player called up for tomorrow, and we're gonna we're gonna do a little, you know, I'm me, so we're gonna do a little bit of chat about the uh, rule five because we've seen some of these guys that I thought were you know maybes be added. Uh, so I want to get into some of the under the radar names uh, and the guys we know for sure. But what's happening is they add these players. It's making it a lot harder to add more. So it's it's gonna be something to watch. But let's get into these games. My curse. Curse of Death, no. My reverse jinx luck certainly came into play on a dominant performance on Friday. Uh, the whole episode about what's wrong with Jose, he goes three for three with a walk. Uh, he hits his 22nd home run in this one. Uh, you know, very, very par for the course, right? I mean, is there anyone I can't jinx by coming out? I mean, I feel like Ahmed Rosario's whole continued season is just me having railed against him at the start of the year. It, it's been, uh, this was a fun game. You know, Naylor had his 15th home run as well. Who reached base twice in this one? It's almost one of those days where it's like, who didn't? Quan, Jose, Naylor, uh, Oscar Gonzalez, Nolan Jones, all reached base twice. You had Jones and Benson playing this one. Jones had three hits. He had as many as Jose. Uh, Quantrell with his best start of the year, seven innings, one hit. No walks, seven strikeouts, and Toronto is a loaded lineup. That is a tough team. Nice to see Eli Morgan come in, gives up a hit, gets a strikeout. Solid inning for him. He needed that. He needed that type of inning. Going and using Sandlin, that's great as well. Sandlin gets one hit, uh, gives up one hit, I should say, and gets the one out. I would have kind of, you have an 8 nothing lead. I would have loved to have seen Batonfield get an opportunity in the ninth over Sandlin. Just because... You want Morgan out there. Morgan needs an opportunity. We need him to try to get back on track. Because, again, diving into his numbers, he hasn't really been bad. He's just been unlucky after being really lucky. He's regressed to mean, and he has been hit hard that way. So you want to help build that confidence up. Like I said, that game against the Tigers, I mean, he just he looked like he didn't have faith in his stuff. So having him go out there and be successful, that's great. But I would have loved to have seen Bait and Field get that opportunity. Because here's the thing. We'll talk about the Xavion Curry edition, you know, later on in the show. But that is a sure sign Peyton Beatonfield is not being added to this 40-man roster at the end of the year. So this, he leads the minors in innings. He has done everything they asked him to do this year. He's been a stalwart. They gave him that opportunity. I would have loved to have seen him come into this game and play. Uh, box score bingo of it all. 14 hits, 3 walks, 17 opportunities right there. Uh, and then, you know, 2 hit by pitches. <laughs> of course, you know... Hedges is one, and of course, uh, you know, Andres is the other. And, I mean, he's, uh, you know, I don't recall since Brandon Geyer, someone who gets hit by as many pitches as he does. So you go through, uh, yeah, the two hit by pitches, the, how many, three walks, 19 opportunities in this game. Uh, you know, eight runs would be closer to 24 opportunities, but they also had the, the two home runs. It's kind of surprising, only the two extra base hits, but still, he got eight runs. Other side, three hits, no walks. That should be about a run if you're lucky. And once you're only at three, and what's interesting is of those three hits, two were extra base hits. But this was just a complete dominant performance. Your three stars, Quantrell has to get one. Jose has to get one. And then, 
I, I'm tempted to give it to Nolan Jones for three hits as well. Um, you know, Naylor had two hits in the home runs. You're kind of tempted there. But Jones didn't strike out. He had three hits, and he just hasn't had a chance to play. So him getting out there and playing is kind of huge. Uh, so I lean to the, him in this one. But And this was a fun game. This was a stellar one. Saturday's was a little bit less fun just because Just McKenzie was great. Six and two-thirds. Five hits, two walks, seven base runners, and you know a little less than seven innings. You're fine with that. Two solo shots. The home run has been his kryptonite all year. Continues to be his kryptonite. Uh, only the three strikeouts. That's the one small area of concern. You'd like to see him miss more bats. And Yale comes in for an inning and a third. Picks it up. Continues to be a solid, solid relief choice. And this is the game you kind of felt the best about, right? Because Mitch White, who they got from the Dodgers rather cheaply because they just need some pitching depth is in here playing and unfortunately they lose this one two to one uh, they managed just six hits they did have four walks so you had those 10 base runners uh, but they just couldn't get it across they had chances but could not get it across in this one and they lose two to one um you got that the run in the first and then it was just kind of scattered throughout who reached base twice in this game nailer uh andres and, you know, that's it. We did not have a lot of... Naylor had the only extra base hit. Uh, your box score bingo, as I like to call it. You had six hits, the four walks is a 10, and the error makes 11. So that's at least three runs scored, typically. Um, only one extra base hit, so you can understand being lower. But one run on that is unlikely. That is, they underperformed. Other side, six hits, two walks. That's eight opportunities. Getting two runs, it's about right. This is one that they could have won. They really could have won. It was just unfortunate the way it fell. They couldn't seem to, you know, string anything together. Uh, on the other side of things, again, it's interesting. We talked about three extra, three hits, two for extra bases on Friday, six hits, and then four for extra bases on Saturday. So they were just extra base machines in this uh, these two games. Uh, players of the game in this one, you know, Andres, Andre, Andres is one of them, uh, Jimenez. And then uh, I think you have to give it to McKenzie. I mean, you go almost seven innings, give up two runs. That's a solid performance. And then I go to Naylor because he had the extra base hit and uh, he reached base twice. He had a walk as well. So Naylor, Jimenez, and McKenzie. We're going to take our first break, come back, talk about Sunday's game, and maybe do a little bit of scoreboard watching, talk about Xavion Curry, talk about Cody Morris, and talk about what might be happening in the next 24 to 48 hours on this 40-man roster as it is right now. Our fantastic sponsor today is LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, and right now in Milwaukee, I can tell you it feels like fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to and faster for free. Keyword there, free. You can cr create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn to reach your net reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network. Simple tools like screening questions make you help you get the right candidate. So you're not wading through tons of candidates. They're helping set you up with the right candidates. They're saving you time and money because again, it's free. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Sunday's game. So this one was two to one. I was getting a little nervous. And then it was three to one, five to one. Can we take a moment and appreciate it? I know Miles Straw did not have, you know, necessarily the best day, and he hasn't. Uh, but that catch in the fifth. Most center fielders don't make that. There's only a handful who make the, the play he made. All of a sudden, that's a 5-3 ball game with a runner on second base, and the you know the meaty part of the lineup is up then. You got Teoscar, Chapman, the next two guys. Instead, he makes that brilliant catch. It's 5-2, saves a run, maybe more, changes you know where the game is at that point in time, and allows Bieber to cruise through to go seven, which saves the bullpen. Again, I'm a little sad that between all of these games, uh, you know, we didn't get to see Batonfield just because I don't think he's going to get an opportunity uh, the rest of the year. But at least he was on the roster. 
uh, in this game. You know, Ahmed with home run number eight. Now, he didn't have a home run until that Colorado series, so he is really starting to elevate and hit the ball well over the course of the last few months. That's like, what, eight home runs in two months? Uh, who reached base multiple times? Well, Ahmed had three hits uh, and a walk, so four times. Jose had a hit and a walk. Listen, I I understand he had a great Friday. He did. Saturday or Saturday was, eh, you know, it was pretty solid. Sunday ended up being solid, but it's still troubling to me how much he went from the guy who seemed to never swing at a bad pitch to the pop-up king who was always swinging at pitches out of the zone. He ended up being fine today. And again, Friday was great, but it doesn't change the fact he's been average since his injury, and I'm still concerned. Uh, in terms of reaching base, uh, Owen Miller, two hits. And, you know, yes, I was going to complain about him playing in this game, but I'm just going to be quiet now because, you know, it came together for him. And then Hedges with two hits as well. Uh, nobody got hit by a pitch. And, I mean, I I did not like the matchup with Gaussman especially. And we talked about this too. Like, Owen Miller is actually... I mean, I was listening to, like, a, uh, I wasn't listening. I, I, I hit my podcasts to play when I'm not using my phone and just, you know, get one extra hit. <laughs> not, not beyond doing that. And I, the clip popped up about me talking about, like, why uh, Miller and Naylor should just be a platoon. And it's funny because back then, like, Miller had a 116 runs created plus against lefties. Now he's down to, like, a, a 70. Like, he, he cannot hit lefties at all. He's actually been better against righties. But he's been used as this lefty bat. So I was like, oh, Parting wants to complain because I'd like to see more of the young kids play. You know, put Freeman, uh, you know, at second. But, but I, you know, they're, they're resting uh, Jimenez. So tomorrow he can play full 18, I'm sure. So at the end, it worked out. And again, my first guess, is, first feeling was like, why are they playing Miller? And then I was like, you know what? Miller actually hits righties better. He should be playing in these games. Uh, as the platoon bat, the strict platoon bat it doesn't make much sense for him what we've seen in his uh you know his lineup or his performance and he had a pair of doubles up to 24 hedges had a double mentioned rosario's home run shane bieber uh seven innings eight hits zero walks six strikeouts two earned runs he was up to 95 what's something we really haven't seen this year uh was not missing bats as much as you'd expect with the extra velocity jump but in terms of fip i mean he has been he's in the top 10 i think i saw uh, Zach point out uh, that he moved up a spot to seventh overall in FIP, I believe is what he posted. And yeah, he's been, you know, he's been quietly a great pitcher and Cleveland got it done. They pick up another win, Trevor Steffen, after the hard game against the Tigers, you know, one inning, two strikeouts, class A, uh, hadn't pitched all weekend and been a need for him, gets the one inning with the strikeout, uh, no Shaw all weekend, no bait and field. We will see a lot of Shaw tomorrow uh, and uh, 99 because, I mean, he, 99 had the weekend off and Shaw didn't pitch. So they're both with the doubleheader. I mean, it makes sense. It's I'm not going to complain about it. I will complain depending on how they are used. But I'm not going to complain if they appear tomorrow because it's logical. It makes sense. Three stars in this one. You got to give one to Bieber. And then I think Ahmed with the three hits a walk, reach base four times and had the home run in this one. And then I... I lean into Owen Miller for two extra base hits. So again, he actually hits righties by and lefties. He should be playing against righties. He shouldn't be a platoon bat. Two out of three from the Blue Jays, uh, who had, I believe, the third best record in the American League heading into this one. I think they still do. But I, again, it's, I don't want to say it's putting the league on notice or anything like that, but this team, for as much as people are like, oh, the Central is terrible, two out of three from the Blue Jays in Toronto two split a series against the Astros. When you got Bieber and McKenzie, you have two solid postseason pitchers. I don't know, is Quantrill your three? Maybe. Where they have to sit down? I mean, I probably lean that way myself right now, not just because he had a good week or a good you know start this weekend. You know, the lineup has its ups and downs, but Quan, Rosario, Ramirez, Naylor is pretty good. Oscar Gonzalez, We'll see. I'm not sure if he is more than an average bat, but I mean, I think he's a major league player. And then after that, you kind of run into some... And then, you know, Jimenez didn't play in this one. So you put him normally up there as well. It's like the top half of the lineup can do some work. Bottom half is going to leave you with some issues. But this is a playoff team. It is a team that has a chance to do some damage in the postseason. And you never know what's going to happen. The one time this team went deep was the year that, like, 
their number two through four pitchers almost, or you know, their their number two and number three pitcher missed the entire postseason. I think Salazar what bullpen like he got up in the bullpen but never actually came into a game. And Carrasco got hurt, and you know that was back when Bauer was clearly the number four on that team. So yeah, I, I think they've got a chance. You never know. You just got to make it. That's the thing. Once you make it, who knows how it's going to work? We'll have to see. But taking two out of three from the Blue Jays, you know, don't let anyone tell you this team is just, you know, yeah, they're going to get the postseason and get run. No, no one can say that. <laughs> the Nationals should have never won the World Series they won. Like that was not one where they were favored. I think in two of their series, Cleveland, the one time they shouldn't make it, they made it to the World Series. Postseason, you never know what's going to happen, and that's part of the fun. So. We'll talk a little bit about it here. They announced that Xavier Curry is going to pitch tomorrow's game. Good for him. I think he's worth promotion. He's been showing, you know, he had a no hitter into the sixth in his last start. He's got, you know, he's got the right pitch mix to be a back end starter. Or again, I think both of him and Gannis, I could see ace relief types. I could see, you know, very good relievers yeah, with their pitch mix build and what they do. And, you know, potential back-end starter types. So calling him up means someone's getting taken off. We assume, I guess, Jake Jewell. Uh, but Cody Morris, I thought, was supposed to be. I was talking with Justin Lotta about it at JL underscore baseball. Because, uh, uh, you know, whenever I come back, you know, I took the weekend off. I'm starting some teaching stuff next week. So this was like, okay, I'm just going to step away from the Internet for the most part. Uh, just enjoy the weekend. But I was talking with him about what transpired because he's my go-to. And it was like, doesn't Morris need to be activated? And we're both like, I thought so. And talking with him, it, you know, it seems like they're not even using Castro in that up and down role anymore. So you think that Jewel and Castro are what replace Morris and uh, for Curry. And then, you know, when Go- Ghost is healthy, maybe he doesn't get brought. But they put him on the 40, you know, the 60 day. They maybe make a move and add him. You know, they can just release him outright. Um, it's a weird situation for him because I, I don't know if he's back next year. I don't know if he's done enough, but you assume those two guys are out, and then all of a sudden it's going to be interesting to see what is left on this 40 man that they can fiddle around with. And we'll talk about that in segment three because there's three players we know they have to add. And then there's a really interesting group of guys we got to talk about, including, you know, Jonathan Rodriguez, who just got promoted to uh, to double A or is about to get promoted to double A. Uh, who you know, we talked about it. You've got Will Benson, who's one of the, you know, statistically maybe the best hitter in the international uh, league in AAA before he got called up. You have uh, John Kenzie Noel, who leads, might lead all of the minors in home runs. Uh, and then, but it's Jonathan Rodriguez who led this team in slugging percentage. We're going to get into some of these names on the third segment of Lockdown Guardians. So our next fantastic sponsor is Bet Online. They currently don't have Game Two up, but they have uh, Tigers Guardians Game One uh, right now being listed, and we're the they have an over under at eight in that game with Savale versus Hutchinson. I'd be tempted to take the over in that one. Under is plus one hundred five. Over is minus one twenty five. So I guess they agree with me. We don't. They haven't put in their. Uh, they're plus or minus in this series, but I would think that Cleveland's going to be a plus just by uh, nature of how bad Detroit is. <laughs> I think they're on a seven-game losing streak. Uh, our good friends over at Bet Online—they're who I go to when I want to check out odds. They are, you know, find re- reviews and news of every league, every sport, every area. You can go check out our friends at Bet Online to get more information. Uh, you can go to Bet Online today, or you use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, so I wanted to comment over here. We, you know, we're talking about they're going to add Xavier Curry. We know Cody Morris is going to be activated, and then we know that likely Jake Jewell and um, Anthony Castro make the most sense to go off. So I put up the 40 man roster. If we don't consider those two, because I'm considering them to be gone. And we don't consider Anthony Ghost, who's currently on the 60-man, who I think also has a chance to be gone. Here are the only players I have that are kind of questionable. You know, they're going to be free agents or um, maybe other people have passed them. And that is Kirk McCarty and Connor Pilkington. Uh, we're seeing Gaddis and Curry get those opportunities. Now, lefties are always lefties, which gives them additional value, but we'll see. Hedges is a free agent. Shaw, it's a 
team option. I think unless he makes too many appearances, then it, it might vest. I need to really dig into that. Maley, now he's uh, doesn't have arbit. He has arbitration, so he's arbitration eligible. Ernie Clement, only because so many infielders have passed him. Like, what do you do with Clement? It's kind of the problem they have with Yu Chen Chang. Like, okay, we have all these infielders, only so many can stay on roster. And then also, just based on there being so many guys who might be ahead of this player on roster, Richie Palacios. If you already have Benson and Jones, what are you going to do with Palacios? So, you know, one could also maybe argue Jose Tenya because he's had a rough year in double A and he's only down in double A. And that, you know, someone like that, maybe there's a better chance. I think someone claims him just because he's had the good statistical performance numbers in the past. And you're just going to claim him to more than likely, you know, bury him on your 40 man anyways. But yeah, this year in Akron, a 264, 299 on base, 394 slugging, a 693. It's been a little bit rough for him. So, I mean, I think they'd rather trade him, see if there's 105 strikeouts, so just 19 walks. You know, I. I wouldn't be shocked if they took him off. Let me put it that way. Because, again, they have so many infielders they got to protect. So you have this list here. And I know people are like, the Rule 5 will figure itself out. Adding Curry and Gattis take off two of the questionable guys. We know they have to, have to, have to protect Brennan, Naylor, and why am I having a, a, a brain a fart moment? Uh, Angel Martinez. That's the third guy. So, you know, if you just assume... Hedges is a free agent. Shaw probably gets let go. And then you assume Kurt McCarty. That's those three. Right? Those are probably the ones that make the most sense. Pilk, Maley, Clement, Palacios. So who else could there be? Well, I mentioned the fact that you know, uh, Jonathan Rodriguez is going to get the call up soon. The thing about Jonathan Rodriguez is he was a former high pick, a third-round pick, who, again, leads the Cleveland minor leagues in slugging percentage. You know, it, it wasn't an easy path for him, much like maybe Will Benson, if you want a comparison, uh, but a high pick who is figuring it out and is, you know, utterly dominating. And, you know, he's a 22 year old switch hitter. He is, even though, you know, this is, you know, for him to be rule, he's rule out. Was he, I mean, heck, he might have been draft eligible last year. Yeah, he was. He was draft eligible last year. I think he becomes a minor league free agent at the end of this year, right? Has it been six years in the organization? Yeah. Drafted in 2017, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So no, I was wrong. He's no 22. Six years. He could be a free agent. Got a good arm, solid defender, switch hitter, and you know those. Basically, you go back and yeah, he was playing in rookie ball those first few years, but he was fine. 2017, 18, 19, good production. Like he was a guy who was a borderline top 20 prospect. 2020 season, he's on the sideline like everyone else. Last year, it was rough when he got promoted to high A. But this year, it's still striking out a lot, but 20 plus home runs, you know, switch hitter. If you don't add him, you might lose him, right? So it's an interesting situation to consider with him. Uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, who is 20 and a half years old, was the big name in his draft class, in his um, international class. You know, it wasn't Angel Martinez, I don't believe, though Martinez was pretty high as well wasn't some of those other players that have made it. It was Gabriel Rodriguez was the, the big guy. I believe he got a seven-figure bonus. And it hadn't been easy for him. He's another guy that, you know, he kind of moved slowly through the system and was not super productive. He's seen the ball better this year. He's walking at a higher rate. His uh, average is the best it's been. He's always had high bat pips, but his average now matches. His average has gone up, even though the bat pip is consistent. So he's making better quality contact. I don't know if they protect him just because it's been one good year in high A for, and, and he's young for high A and not even 21 yet. So, you know, he's someone interesting to consider. And then I think you have to talk a little bit about Micah Pyers. Now, Pyers is fascinating. I got some great uh, facts on him from uh, Justin Lada, again, at JL underscore baseball, who I retweeted an article he had. But Micah Pyers dad is in the Orioles Hall of Fame. He used to be the guy who taught, or no, granddad, I'm sorry, is in the Orioles Hall of Fame. Uh, was drafted by the Yankees. Let's see what's the exact information here. Uh, he was in the scouting bur- bureau, the MLB one. First he was a scout for the Yankees, and then I believe the Orioles, where he's in the Orioles Hall of Fame. 
uh, and used to be like the head teacher at the scout MLB scout school. Dad was a first round pick by the Yankees. Brother is in the Yankee system. Went to J. Sarah High School, probably the most. You know, if I were to rank like high schools, and this will get me in trouble, it's like that's the first one I think of when I think of high octane um, producing MLB talent. And he's six foot four. He's mostly played first base this year. He's a center fielder. Went to Nazarene Point, Pomo, uh, Point Lomo, I believe. Very small school. Very very small school. Day three guy. Amazing bloodlines. And he's a better athlete than he maybe gets credit for. And there's a chance, since he's mostly been a first baseman, that you think he can pass through waivers. But we've talked about him. He has, at points this year, been you know, one of the most consistently strong hitters in the system. Uh, uh, 257, 338, 494, 122 runs created plus, 16 home runs, 16 stolen bases. I don't think they can necessarily protect him. But he's you know another interesting name just in terms of guys who could be you know, exposed. What do you do with uh, Nick Enright, who's put up amazing numbers as a reliever, but maybe doesn't have dominant stuff? I mean, I don't have the spin data. Maybe it stands out there. What do you do with Nick Miklojak, who, I mean, I would say for two years in a row is the top reliever in the system, but really struggled this year. What do you do with Joey Cantillo, who just can't stay healthy, but has been dominant when he's healthy? I think you have to find a spot for him first. But it's a really interesting group. It's Again, it's not quite as dire as it once was because they finally done some tr- trimming. But the fun thing now is debating that point. Like, is Cantillo a must-add? Maybe. I mean, he's been that good, but the problem is health. It's it's health a year ago that he wasn't put on the roster. It's health now that he hasn't. He's barely pitched over the last two months. What do you do with that? Um, you know, what do you do with Mikla Jack? Because there's a good chance he's gone. His stuff is so good, someone's gonna think we'll fix it. So do you, do you take that risk, or do you add him? Uh, Micah Pyers, is there a team out there going, I, we think we can put him in the outfield, and he's an, a, you know, a, a player, a helium prospect. You want a helium prospect, it's Micah Pyers. You want another one, Shothan Rodriguez. Rodriguez is going to get a chance to show himself in double-A. Good athlete, switch hitter. Third-round pick, was drafted, was the youngest player in his draft class. It's taken him a while, but hey, you know, again, he's always been very young for the level, and 2020 messed everybody up. Specifically, younger guys like him. So it's it's going to be something to watch. Again, this 40-man is not... there's And you go and you make those moves. You add those three. And I talked about, you know, Pilkington, Maley. You're going to need three catchers. So Maley probably stays. Uh, and then you got, what, Maley, Maley, Naylor, Lavastida. You're going to want another vet. So if Maley doesn't stay, then they're going to trade for somebody or bring back Hedges. Palacios, Clement, what happens if, the, unless they go out and start making these trades to condense down talent, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. It is going to be a hard situation for them just to, to add anyone outside. So you have to assume, though, if they add someone, they might trade multiple pieces. So that's kind of the way it would work. But they're definitely, not that they ever add anyone in free agency, but free agency is definitely not how they're going to do it. Uh, just to go back to Xavier Curry, it is interesting with him that, now, I know Fangraphs had him as the 11th best prospect in the system before the year began. Fastball slider curve. I really liked him coming out of Georgia Tech. Uh, I think it was the was it the curveball was like maybe the best uh, curveball in that draft class or right up there near the top. And yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens now. Like who is going to... You know, I, I think... You know, and you know, we didn't even talk about well, all this Ethan Hankins. Uh, just another pitcher I didn't even think about. But, yeah, like, who is going to stay? Who's going to go? I'm hoping, you know, we'll see something where they figure something out and trade down some pieces. I would love to see, honestly, like, if you're afraid you're going to lose someone like Ethan Hankins and you don't have the spot and you have, like, a Jose Tenya and you're like, okay, Hankins and Tenya are really interesting high upside guys, but they're not really with our core of players right now. I'd love to see them trade them for draft picks. I would, I'm still all on that uh that train or you know do you know i don't think you necessarily want to trade him for uh another tobias myers type but um maybe you trade him do the reverse and trade for that farther away high upside prospect uh, it's going to be interesting diane uh Frias is another guy who a lot of people love who's hit really well in the minors who probably should be like a, a you know we discussed and it, it's interesting i pulled up the Fangraphs article lenny torres i didn't even think about because he's been so bad but on their must ads they have uh, Hankins, Miklo Jack, and Andrew Miziasik, who 
I didn't think of as a must add. That's kind of fascinating. I'll have to go through and really see. I don't, and they don't explain why Missy Asik is a must add uh, outside of, you know, I mean, they don't explain it at all. I'm just assuming it might be due to uh, just performance. But yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. This, in general, though, this is just a fun team. I'm excited to see what Curry can do tomorrow. He has earned this spot. And in terms of pitching depth, I think, again, Curry and Gaddis are no knock on Pilkington and McCarty, but they are better. Those The other two are lefties and they've been solid, but they're getting to the point where we're starting to see that talent hit in waves and waves and waves, and it should get a lot of fun as we continue to see these guys come up and perform well. And man, I mean, the development in the minor leagues, we always knew about the pitching side of things, but the hitting side has caught up, and that is what we are seeing with someone like Benson completely turning his career around. I mean, it is a complete career turnaround for a guy who's been left unprotected, I think twice before this year. Oscar Gonzalez, multiple times left unprotected in the Rule 5 draft. No one claimed him. He was a minor league free agent who chose to come back. Look what's happening with Rodriguez. Look what the stat Micah Pyers has made. This is a fun team, and the development is off the charts right now for hitting and pitching, and we'll see what they do. But if you can't get excited about this team, if you're just going to focus on the negativity, I don't know what to tell you. Because it is a fun team excelling right now. Get on board. I'm Jeff Ellis. This has been Locked on Guardians Podcast. This week, remember to rate and review, download daily. It helps. Let's check our YouTube subscriber count. Uh, right now, I have that deal. You know, I talked about I'm at 489. We're 21 away from 500. Keep the push going. Let's get to 500. I'm not asking you to, to hit the bell as well to get alerts. I'm just saying subscribe. You can hit the bell to get no alerts. But it, it getting me... Getting this account up to a thousand would just help me as a podcaster. I don't ask for much. I give you lots of free content that most of you seem to like. Just saying. Uh, I know I know some of you sometimes, but hey, I, I, any daily podcast is going to annoy you to some degree. So the one thing I do ask is really, if you can, you go subscribe on the YouTube. If you have multiple accounts, like I have, <laughs> I am subscribed twice to Lockdown Guardians because I have two accounts. If I'm being honest. So do that. Do what you can to help with the subscription. We need to get to a thousand so I can make a, you know anything off the YouTube if I'm just being transparent here, and that would just help me out in terms of the show. So I would appreciate any and all support you can give. Uh, again, I've been Jeff Ellis. This has been Locked On Guardians podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Jeff MLB Draft. Please, please, please subscribe to the YouTube. Download daily as well, even if you're not listening. Um, I appreciate all of you, and I want to thank you for the fantastic support we have seen this channel grow a lot over the course of this year so thank you for whatever part you decide to do as i end every show go go guardians go